Welcome to Culture Builders, practical tips, ideas, and strategies to grow your leadership and your team culture. So how can mentors, consultants, and coaches shape your leadership growth? Being a great athlete, right, it can lay the foundation, the groundwork for becoming a good, a good coach. However, being an exceptionally talented athlete, I actually think that can hold you back. And I think the same applies to having experience as a coach. Right? Coaching for 10, 20, or 30 years might provide you with a wealth of knowledge, but it also can be one of your greatest limiters if you let it. Why? Because experience and success can make you think that you're always right. After all, you, you've been through it all, right? Well, this is a mental trap. The more you rely on your past, the less open you can be to new ideas, different perspectives, and the evolution of your approach as a coach. I speak from experience, right? Early in my career, I believed my talent as a player and then my international experience as a coach like validated every decision that I made. I thought others should just follow me simply because of my background. Well, that mindset, it doesn't promote growth. It stifles it. If you're serious about being a high performer leader, you need input from people who aren't in your situation, right? Nobody grows in isolation. There's a power and wisdom from others. Recently, I had the chance to interview Dr. Michael Gervais, the, uh, one of the world's leading performance psychologists on the Coaching Culture Podcast. Now, he broke down the five pillars of high performance, self-discovery, mental skills, psychological frameworks, recovery practices, and mindfulness. But here's what stuck with me the most. He said, mindfulness is the golden thread tying everything together. It's about being aware and present in the, in the moment, fully engaged with what's happening right now. Well, I asked Dr. Michael Gervais, how could someone develop mindfulness. And his answer was very simple, but profound. He said, meditation, journaling, and conversations with people of wisdom. So let's focus on that last one, conversations with people of wisdom. He emphasized sitting with someone who has wisdom, who has reference points radically different and deeper than yours, holds up a mirror to you. These conversations allow you to see yourself more clearly and better understand the world around you, end quote. So the question is, who's in your corner? Who are you having these conversations with? Are they helping you grow or actually just reinforcing your current ways of thinking? Let's take Shaka Smart, for instance, a leader we've had on the Coaching Culture podcast uh, this year in 2024. Now, despite being at the top of his game, he hired a trained executive coach to help him with his leadership. Why? Because he values those conversations, especially with people who bring fresh, wise perspectives. Now, let's explore, though, the different types of people you can have in your corner, okay? There's mentors, there's consultants and there's coaches. What's the difference? Mentors share their experiences and wisdom. They're great for advice rooted in years of experience, experience and expertise, okay? So mentors have a lot of experience. Consultants offer models and tools for solving specific problems. You come to a consultant, you present a challenge or they help you identify challenges and then they provide the solution. So consultants have models and tools. Coaches, on the other hand, are different. They hold space for you. Instead of giving you the answers, they ask questions. They listen deeply. They help you reflect. They challenge your assumptions and see yourself and help you see yourself more clearly. Their role isn't to deliver solutions or give advice. It's to guide you in discovering them. So coaching makes a difference. In a recent interview on the Sports Agent Podcast, Emma Hayes, the former Chelsea manager and the current head coach of the U.S. National Women's Soccer Team, she discussed how hiring an executive coach was the best thing that she ever did for her leadership. Seeing coaches like Emma Hayes and Shaka Smart make this investment in their leadership, it only affirms for me the direction of my work has taken over the last eight years with my business TOC. Like while I do some consulting, I primarily focus on coaching. And here's why. Experience and advice alone aren't enough to help people navigate today's complex leadership challenges. Leadership growth requires more than just solutions. It requires deep reflection and self-awareness. Coaching facilitates that. It offers the opportunity for insight, it, uh, it taking a broader perspective and sustainable change. Coaching helps to evolve your thinking. It's not just about solving immediate problems. Now, if you're serious about growing as a leader, I highly recommend that you consider hiring a trained executive coach, someone who will ask the tough questions, challenge your assumptions, and that will hold up the mirror to reveal the work, the real work that needs to be done. Thanks for listening or watching. Be sure to subscribe for more Culture Builders.